Uh, hi everyone. I hope everyone's doing well and uh, has enjoyed uh, the rest of the, the earlier session today and the opening session. Um, the topic uh, for this session is misinformation during health crisis among vulnerable populations, and the focus will be on basically the Levant and North African region. Um, my name is Rinwal Hayek. I am going to be presenting this presentation. It's going to be a very short talk. And also, uh, I am a non-resident fellow with the Tahrir um, Institute for Middle East Policy. Uh, the today's session, I mean, you can contact. I mean, you can get in touch with me on my Twitter account at Rinwa Hayek if needed. And today's session is basically about uh, the spread of fake news regarding COVID-19, specifically that has been ravaging uh, our world in the, in the last two years and uh, about social media and news outlet and how they have contributed to the spread of misinformation in our region and especially within vulnerable communities instead of helping get out of it. So uh, this is mostly going to target not only the refugee communities, but in laws such as our um, health communication, because maybe this is a bit uh, different than what we have been talking to that are more related to policy, but health communication is a science and an art of using communication to advance the health of and well-being of people and population. So all in all, it has a very good or let's say a very positive um, uh, result. However, during this uh, pandemic, we have heard news from every bit um, of society, of media, e either if it is social media or the usual types of media, radio, TV, um, newspapers, our families, our friends, we've discussed this so much uh, to the point that WHO has, I mean, labeled this as an infodemic and has labeled other um, types of words such as misinformation and disinformation, which we have heard a lot recently. And infodemic is actually a fear uh, especially for the World Health Organization, and it can be a potential pandemic on its own, it's wrong. Um, and definitely all of you maybe, or the majority here or not, have probably seen how to spot these fake news because um, we we try to, to, to be told about it. So like look at the source, the author, verify where it's coming from, from whom and so on. So going from here, I'll go to the other part of my talk, which is about the vulnerable populations that we are targeting. Um, as we know, the MENA region is full of crisis, whether political, wars, conflict, economic, and so on. And this does lead to a big group becoming more and more vulnerable day after day from either being displaced, um, being refugees, uh, being migrant workers, or so on and even vulnerable groups within our society, such as the elderly, who might um, not, uh, the information might, the correct information might not be reaching them or not. And from this, with the technology taking over many aspects of our lives, we have seen how this has facilitated the spread of misinformation during this pandemic and how it has been an enabler for misinformation uh, spreading all around the world, and I will say, especially in our region, where we might lack some regulations when it comes to social media, what, but we also have a lot of regulations in place limiting our freedom of movement. So it's a bit of a sword um, with two sides, where there are some limits that might um, limit the freedom of discussions, but also it might be an enabler for spreading misinformation because. We don't have rules and regulations targeting this uh, special type of, um, of discussion. Um, going to more into our vulnerable population. So what, what could we see? What, what have we seen? What were the different case studies we have seen um, during this? And I'll stop sharing so, uh, so we could have it more as a discussion. Um, so how we do see this? So there has been a couple of studies done in the region on misinformation and our vulnerable groups, but they're not a lot compared to a lot of studies done in more developed countries. Such studies targeted mostly refugees, forgetting a bit migrant workers and other vulnerable groups in our populations. 
how we do see this? There, there was a project uh, conducted by an entity called Internews. I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with, with them. However, they looked um, at Syrian refugees' access to information during COVID-19 pandemic in Lebanon, and they had a lot of points to discuss. And they're mainly, and I think um, their findings could be replicated to other uh, vulnerable groups as well. So what, what were the findings of this? What we have is that basic information would, need, would reach, for example, Syrian refugees and vulnerable populations. However, how these basic information are reaching them and how they are implementing them and their behaviors accordingly. And here is what we question. So um, the basic information is mostly concentrated in, for example, urban areas or big settlements where humanitarian agencies could reach these population and, I mean, discuss with them the needed information and do uh, awareness and what is needed. However, from the other side, in remote areas and peripheral areas, very little information was reaching these vulnerable groups. The same could be said about migrant workers, elderly, and other marginalized populations in Lebanon, because media, mainstream media, is not was not always um, propagating the needed uh, messages for the COVID-19 pandemic. It was uh, mostly attacking citizens, and it wasn't wasn't communicating in a clear way what needed to be learned about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic points and the awareness methods uh, for it. Additionally, because of this and because of the lack of trust in the government entity, which, which in itself is a problem in Lebanon, there were a lot of reliance on social media and um, maybe what we call in French, the bouche au rey. So what we hear other people telling us and what we discuss with our friends, not necessarily being from a trusted source. As such, we have seen a lot of creation of WhatsApp group or closed Facebook groups where there could not be some type of control um, over them because who, who could close a, a WhatsApp group? I mean, there's no rule for that. Let's, let's, let's be honest in this. So um, while these could be some grassroots um, groups forming and they could have a positive advantage, from another perspective, they didn't because either they allowed for the spread of misinformation or they were created to fight the spread of these misinformation. And as a solution for that is basically having a bottom-up approach when um, spreading information and correct information during pandemics, rather than a top-down approach that we have seen during this pandemic. Another uh, another example that we could say are the the refugees in Jordan, which are a bit easier to target. However, there was a study conducted, and it didn't show good um, um, good numbers, where only 66% of uh, the people targeted in the studies, which were women in a camp, um, only had access to information. And just as a reminder, Jordan has um, large camp settings for its refugees rather than you know, having them spread. So while this, this might be a different setting in Lebanon and uh, humanitarians there or government might not face the fact that vulnerable populations are scattered, they face the fact they still didn't have good access to information. Again, mainly because trust in, in the sources, but an added um, um, an added level is here that we might forget about is the digital literacy, which is we don't question the fact that these populations has uh, have access to the digital tools that they, I mean, we or they have been using in spreading the information. We need to question. If we are um, sharing uh, a poster on social media, or if we are sending messages to everyone, do these people have a phone? Do these people have internet? Can they read? So these are other uh, things to question. And coming to the end of my discussion, uh, while we might have seen that misinformation has maybe, maybe been limited in the region, or we, we think, to, or we, it seems to be, because we, ha we don't have a lot of data, we don't have a lot of perspectives on it, as we see in the Western world, we need to question 
um, where does this come from? Does this come from because of the lack of studies? Does this come from because we might have more or less freedom of uh, speech or discussion? Um, does this come from uh, hiding these facts? Um, but what does the data tell us from another perspective? As I was looking today at the, our vaccination data, uh, I could only notice that even though we started pretty early in vaccination, especially in, in many countries such as Lebanon, Jordan, uh, Tunisia, Morocco, they started early on vaccinating. We still have a low rate of vaccination and we are reaching a plateau in the vaccination of our population. Are we questioning why is this happening? Are we thinking that this might have a correlation with the misinformation spread and people not wanting to get vaccinated because of the different reasons they have that are most related, related to that? I'm not sure we are doing this. However, this um, we should definitely be looking into that. We should definitely be looking into the correct information reaching the vulnerable population to be able to protect them from this pandemic and uh, basically to protect their lives. So I think um, with this thought, uh, I will end uh, my, my talk. And if there is any um, questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you for listening. Okay, I think there's Yes, I don't think there's question, Nate. So maybe perhaps we stop the recording. Thank you all.